The number one cable news show for nine years and counting. The O'Reilly Factor. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment. Tonight, our pal Dennis is a bit upset over the Khalid Sheikh Mohammed deal. He joins us from Los Angeles. Um, you know, this is easy, though, isn't it for you, Miller? And Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and the four other thugs being tried in New York City. It's dumb. Everybody knows it's dumb. So it's right in your wheelhouse. Well, yeah, they, but up till now, it's kind of, it's always kind of fun being the loyal opposition to the president. But he really, he jumped the shake on this one, Billy. I, 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 they've kind of lost me. They've tightened, they snapped the screw head off. Now, when they brought the lug nut wrench out and said, we're going to shut Gitmo, it was, Woo! and then they said, we're going to bring him back to New York, it was, Woo! and then they said, we're going to give him the same trial you'd get, Miller, it was like, Woo! and it snapped, and I said, Wait a second, what's going on over here? Why the rush to set up this demented salt lick in downtown New York City? I officially don't get the president, and I don't get his guy Stedman, who was up there on the hill today pitching this garbage. Stedman. That's Oprah Winfrey's boyfriend, Stedman. Okay. That's, well, I don't that's know how he got into this job. I don't know how he became <laughs> attorney general. Separated at birth. Um, okay, but Lindsey Graham had a great question uh, to the attorney general. Do you know of any other enemy combatant, not in uniform, being given a civilian trial? And there goes Holder goes, well, I, I might have to do some research. And he, you know, I mean, come on, he got murdered. Listen, if you asked uh, Holder if, they wanted, if, if they'd rather give Palin a military tribunal or a civilian trial, they'd put her in a military tribunal. But we're taking KSM. Look, look what a freak show this is going to turn into, Billy. You might as well call Tom Wolf because this is going to be the bonfire of the insanities. You're going to have OJ Redux. If the turban doesn't fit, you must acquit the kid who lives down the hall in the terrorist lair, Cave O'Kalen. We're already calling him KSM. It's like when Kentucky Fried flipped over to KFC. We've got a nickname for the guy. This is going to be an absolute freak show. It's my lowest moment with the Barack Obama presidency. I agree. I, I think it's a disaster. And when they bring out the waterboarding for a demonstration and they start to, uh, you know, dunk Dennis Miller, because I'm sure you volunteer, in the courtroom, the jurors can see it. Uh, I mean, people are just going to be going crazy. I agree. I just think it's insane. All right. Now, you're, uh, my Sarah Palin interview begins tomorrow night, as I've said about a thousand times trying to get ratings and you are going to interview her on the radio on Friday. How are you going to make your interview different from mine and the others? I'm probably going to talk about hoops and Alaska and fishing and all that stuff. By the time she gets to me, she's been asked everything. I know I'm not going to ask her about Levi's Johnson and this Playboy thing or Playgirl, whatever the hell he's appearing. And, and just let me get this straight before we go any further. Sally Quinn is a genius. But Sarah Palin is stupid. Is that what I, is that what I am to well, gather? Sally, Sally was questioning uh, the governor's view of of God and and God's role in her life, and I just thought there was no need to question that. It's a personal thing, and everybody's entitled to uh, have their own personal faith. Yeah, I just want to write this down though. Sally Quinn is smart. Sarah Palin's dumb. In case I forget that somewhere down the road. <laughs> All right. So you're going to be a, you're a social guy. You're going to talk about uh, shooting wolves and and getting giant crabs off the coast of Alaska and stuff like that? I don't think this woman's going to come back in unless she really goes rogue. So I'm going to talk to her more about what she's willing to do. Is she willing to lead a tax revolt? Is she willing to put a bumper sticker out there that says, less of your money, kill more terrorists? Because that's where she's going to have to go right now. Listen, I haven't ruled her out as somebody I'd vote for for president. Uh, but I, I do know this. She can't halfway it. She's got to go completely. Whatever this rogue thing is, she better steer into that skid. Because the last time I saw somebody like this, I wanted them to be full bore, crash the switchboard. They're not going to play by the rules. Ross Perot. I voted for him. If she wants to go that route, she has my vote. If she's just going to, you know, hedge her bets and be a little bit to the right of the, uh, the Democratic candidate, I'm not interested. Okay, I ask you that. Uh, interesting uh, that you bring it up. Because I, I I agree with you. I don't think the GOP is going to embrace her, but I do think that there's a possible third party in her future. And it's very interesting how she reacts to my question about um, if she's interested in that kind of a movement, because it would be a populist movement. Look, the more President Obama gets in trouble, say this trend continues, he's certainly, he's certainly having a very tough November. Say it continues, the more the country is going to move to the right, but not the standard right wing stuff. 
they're going to move to the populist right. We want a regular person. We're tired of these pinheads. They're screwing everything up. And she is the poster gal for regular people, is she not? Yeah, I think Palin should be playing a seven-year plan here, to be honest. I think she should be summoned to the third party head in this next one and go almost reluctantly. Get her 19 or 20, get in the game, prove herself to be a decent dame, white out some of these errors have been made. And then four years later, I think there's a real viable chance for the first time in the history of the country, a third party candidate could win the presidency of the United States. If I was her, that's what I'd be looking at. Be forced into this one to answer the call of duty, and then four years hence, take it on yourself to front that party, and I think she has a chance. All right, so you're gonna, you're gonna get into that on your radio show on Friday with her. Now, coming up behind I'm see you, what you <laughs> Coming up behind you, we have two guys that make you look mellow, Cheech and Chong, okay? Yeah. Talk about insane. They want to legalize pot. Do you? Well, no, but, you know, I'm, I'm a parent, and I think you put as many steps between in the baffle chamber between your kids and getting high as you can. I'll say this about Cheech and Chong. I know them both. And they're, they're, they're decent guys. I like Tommy. But when Tommy's going to say, what's the downside to pot, I'm going to say the downside is you at age 65 being so sort of bleary-eyed that you're selling skull bongs on the Internet and you end up doing nine months in stir. There's the downside. <laughs> it's Willie Nelson. Why didn't I think of that? I should have asked. Why didn't I think of that? I should have asked him that. <laughs> What's well, Willie Nelson waking up and somebody said, Willie, you owe 15 million. You're there. Really? 15 million? That's Whoa. the downside. That's a lot of brownies. Dennis Miller, everybody. In a moment, as advertised, Cheese and Chong will tell us why pot is good. Hide the children. Right back with you.